Plane. plane. We're going tonight to go to Revelation chapter 4. We're going to read uh, one verse of Revelation chapter 4. And we're going to look tonight at the Almighty God. God is Almighty. Just in verse four, uh, verse 8 of Revelation chapter 4, we read it this morning when we looked at how great our God is. Tonight, again, uh, He is Almighty. Verse number 8, And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is, and is to come. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you that we can learn about you. And Lord, tonight as we look to see that you are all-powerful, Lord, guide our hearts, help us to recognize who you are again, knowing your greatness and your power. Thank you for all you've done for us thank you for continuing to work in our lives as we live in this world i pray in jesus name amen there are words in the old testament hebrew words that mean god almighty and i'll, I'll give them to you and there are also greek words in the new testament that mean uh, god almighty you may have heard of the words in hebrew how many of you i just want to see hands if you've heard the Hebrew words, El Shaddai. Ah, okay, well, it, it, that's what it is. God, El, El is God, and Shaddai means uh, mighty or powerful. God, all-powerful. Um, and in Greek, this one's a tougher one. You, you, El Shaddai is, is, I mean, they've even written songs uh, with the, those words, talking about God Almighty. And, uh, and you don't see them in the Old Testament uh, that uh, it's written in Hebrew. You just don't see it. But you see God Almighty. In the, the, the Greek, it's uh, different words, and it doesn't sound as, as uh, flowing. It's theos pantocrator. <laughs> okay. <laughs> pantocrator. Pan is not bread. Okay. Pan. It's pantocrator. Uh, pan in, in Greek is a, a form of the word pas, which means all. Okay, so, and then uh, krator means power, all power. It, you know it, we've talked about it, God is omnipotent. That's where, that's the word that we're, we uh, remember, and that comes from Latin. It's actually, we'll see it in the, in the scripture, it's actually an a English word, that was translated from Greek, but it comes from Latin. And so the, the Latin word is actually uh, omnipotens. Okay, it would be Deus omnipotens, God Almighty. Different ways of saying what God is. God is Almighty, all powerful. Go over to Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6 is where God speaks to Moses. <clears throat> Start at verse number 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go out, let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. Now, who can tell me what I said this morning? If you were here, what, is it, what, what does it mean to see that I am the Lord? What does Lord mean there? Or what's the underlying word? Yeah, Yahweh or Jehovah? Okay. He says, I am, basically, I am Jehovah. I'm going to read, I am the Lord. I'm not going to put Jehovah in there. You can translate it, that in your mind. Verse 3, And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. Now, remember, now, two things here. 
the name of there, you see that, you see it in italics. What does that mean? The translators put it in there to give us an understanding that uh, God was known as uh, God Almighty, but it's not his name, okay? We know, we understand that God's name is who he is, his character, okay? So he is God Almighty, but by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Now, that uh, Jehovah there is Jehovah, okay? That's the, the uh, Hebrew word, and they didn't translate it, or they didn't change it to Lord with all capitals. He said, they didn't know me. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did not know me as Jehovah. They knew me only as God Almighty. Doesn't change who God is. God is God Almighty. And Abraham and, and Isaac, we'll look at the verses that show us this. Verse number four. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from... Now listen to what he says. The, the, the Jewish people use these, uh, these verses here in their um, Passover time. And because they say these, these things about what God will do for them. And, and during the Passover, they are remembering what God did in Egypt to bring them out. So he tells Moses what he's going to do. He says, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will rid you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. And I will take you to me for a people. And I will be to you a God, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will. How many times have we seen I will there? This is what he's going to do for his people. And I will bring you in unto the land concerning the which I did swear, to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I will give it you for an heritage. I am the Lord. It's interesting what God what when God gives the law, especially in the book of Leviticus, as he tells them what uh, he wants them to do, what what punishments he wants them to give to somebody who does different things or crimes. And the what is the reason that he tells them? He says, I want you to do this. And the reason is because I am the Lord. I am the Lord. No other reason we need. To follow God. His reason is, I'm, I'm the Lord. I'm Jehovah. I am, now what does Jehovah mean? Self-existing one. He didn't, he was not created. He was not born. He has always existed. I mentioned that uh, this morning. And, and you and I can't figure that out. It's, it, from our standpoint, from what we see and how the world works, uh, and how uh, God has set things in order, in progression, people come from people. Horses come from horses. And all of nature, it reproduces itself. Even God says the tree, that, that uh, uh, the, every plant, with its seed in itself, and it produces, what does a daisy produce? A gladiola? A daisy. And God set that in order, so we see that. So when we think about God himself, say, wait a minute. If God exists, then, uh, and we really can't think about it too long because we'll go crazy, okay? But uh, God ex if God exists, then maybe there are other gods like him. He says, no, there's no other God. The Mormons think that he is one God out of whatever, and God was a man at one time, uh, because they can't, they can't just leave it with God. Apparently, they have to say God came from another God. And now he is the God of, of this world and this universe. And God says, no, you're, you can't figure me out. Don't even, don't try. I'm giving you, like I said this morning, I'm giving you the information about me. 
get to know me as best you can, humanly speaking. I will make myself known. He is God Almighty. Go over back, go over, go back to Genesis chapter 17. Now he says by to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they didn't know him as Jehovah. You might see the, the word Lord in all capitals in the writings, but uh, it's because Moses wrote it and he knew who was talking. He says, the Lord said, and you'll see it there in all capitals, but Moses didn't, or uh, Abraham didn't know the, the word Jehovah. Genesis chapter 17, look at verse number one. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. I, there's the reason. I am God Almighty. I am the Almighty God, so you should walk before me as I want you to walk. Go over to Genesis chapter 28. We see what God said to Isaac, or actually in this case, it's what Isaac said. And as he says it, we understand that's how he knew, knew who God was. Genesis chapter 28, look at verse number 3. And God Almighty, he's talking to Jacob as, as Jacob is going to go north to find, uh, well, go get away from his, his brother who wants to kill him. In verse number three, he says, And God Almighty bless thee, and make thee fruitful, and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. He doesn't say Jehovah, he says God Almighty, because that's, that's all he knows about God and who he is. Look over at uh, Genesis 35, and we see what uh, God says to Jacob. Genesis 35 and verse number 11 and God said unto him I am God Almighty be fruitful and multiply a nation and a company of nations shall be of thee and kings shall come out of thy loins and the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee I will give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. So God Almighty gave the land to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What well, we saw already, I want you to see again, but in a different place. Look at Revelation chapter 1. So God Almighty is Jehovah. Revelation chapter 1, look down at verse number 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Which was, which is and is to come. God exists when he wrote this, and we can say it even today. God exists today. He is. Also, he has been. Now that Those two are easy because you is right now, right? <laughs> I am existing right now. I have existed, Ken Butler, in the past. Not before 1955, though. Okay? I have existed in the past. I exist now. And I may exist in the future, physically, but I will exist too, okay? The difference between me and you and God is that we had a definite beginning. There was a time when I did not exist, but for God, when he says, which was, he has always existed. Remember what Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. <laughs> God is not subject to time. God has created time. He only became human for a certain period of time when he came into time for you and me as Jesus Christ, and he died for us. God is almighty, and he is, he has been, and he will be forever existing. So when we look at God almighty, Let's look at some things that he is. 
okay? God Almighty is there for our protection. He is our protection. He protects us. Look at Genesis chapter 15. We're going to be looking at many different uh, scriptures because the scripture actually does more, uh, is where we should go to see what God says about himself and not to, uh, not that I can explain everything. God says it better than I can. Genesis chapter 15 He doesn't stumble around when he says it. Genesis chapter 15, verse number 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. He says, Don't be afraid. I'm blocking the trouble. I am your shield, his, his protection. Look over at Genesis 26. Genesis 26 and verse number 24. Speaking to Isaac, God says, uh, And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. He says, I am with thee. Talked about that today, that when God is with us, it's not, he's not just with us, he's in us now. Mm -hmm. He told Abraham, he told Isaac here, I am with you. Don't be afraid. Wherever you go, whatever you do, I am with you because I made a covenant with your father, Abraham. You are going to get this land. Don't worry. Don't overthink anything. I am with you. That's our protection. God is, or God Almighty is protection. Go over to Isaiah 41. How many verses do we actually need for us to, to know what God is saying about himself? One. But I like to, I like to look at as many as I can in the service so that we can see more not just rule out just one look at isaiah 41 verse number 10 fear thou not for i am with thee be not dismayed for i am thy god i will strengthen thee yea i will help thee yea i will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness all three of those verses, those passages we read, what did he say? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because I'm with you. Don't be afraid. I'm your shield. Don't be afraid because I am going to help you. I'm going to help you. It's not that I'm going to help the enemy. I'm going to help you. And I am almighty God. And so who should we be afraid of? Nobody. Who's on our side? God is. This morning we saw a verse that said, uh, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Because we're watching God and waiting for him. Don't be afraid. Ever. Ever. The Almighty not only is our protection, but he blesses us. And he blesses us as a good father blesses his children. Look over at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and start at verse number 16. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, because of that, because we are God's people, come out from among them and be ye separate, 
saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Now, if you, if you are a parent, you know what your, uh, what your feelings are for your children, your little children. You don't want to hurt them. You don't want to do bad things to them. You want to bless them. You want to meet their needs. Yeah, you have to spank them once in a while because they're bad. That's just natural. God does have to spank us, but he wants the best for us. He wants to bless us. We read it this morning. I think we read it. James, uh, he said, every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from above from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God doesn't change. And he gives good gifts because we're his children. He also blesses in other ways when even through the self, even through self, when people are depending on something else, he works in their hearts for them to uh, be blessed. Look over at Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, I want you to look at verse number 24. When you think of God being the almighty God, all-powerful, omnipotent God, with more power than you can ever imagine, I mean, we can imagine, he created out of nothing, and that that's pretty difficult. Why would he even be concerned about you and me? But he has made himself known, and he says, listen, and he even came down on our level as Jesus Christ in order for us to be saved. And he says this in verse 24, Jesus said it, and again I say unto you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, yeah, yeah. Have you ever looked at these things? I just as what it says here, Jesus beheld them. Now he was talking with them, right? But God had Matthew write this down. Then Jesus beheld him. He looked him, looked him in the eye, and he says, "With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible." You know, we 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 have questions sometimes. And it's like when we when we get the answer from God's word, it's like God's looking us in the eyes and saying, read it. Here's here's the answer. Pay attention. It's important. So Jesus beheld them and said, in your minds, now think about it. A camel can't go through the eye of a needle. And and <laughs> Let me just throw in this from out here, okay? <laughs> there are people who say what he was probably referring to was a gate going into the city of Jerusalem that they called the camels or the, the, the eye of a needle. And for a camel to go through that, it had to scrunch itself down and wiggle through. You know what that is? That's some person's mind thinking. Stop thinking like that. Look, at, Just take it for what it is. Can God put a camel through the eye of a sewing needle? How? Hmm? He is what? All mighty. <laughs> right? He is omnipotent. All powerful. And even though we can't understand it, with men, this is impossible. Now, if you go the way some people think he's talking about that gate in Jerusalem. Can the camel go through that quote unquote eye of a needle? Yes. Well, it's not, well, why would Jesus say with men it's impossible if those people have seen the camel go through that eye of a needle, that gate? It's nonsense. Don't listen to people. Prove it through scripture. When I read eye of a needle, it's not telling me that it's a gate. Okay. It's the, a needle's eye. And God can do that. So God will bless 
and bring a rich man into heaven when that rich man stops trusting in his riches and trusts in Christ, Jesus Christ. Anybody can go to heaven. God will accept anybody if they come through Jesus Christ. The Almighty can bless us. With God's might, the Almighty God can make it so barren women can have children. Let me just mention them. You want to write it down if you're writing notes. Luke chapter 1 verse 37. The angel told um, Mary that Elizabeth was pregnant. Elizabeth was an old woman and she never had kids and figured she never would have kids, but she became pregnant with John the Baptist before he was a Baptist. He said to Mary, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Genesis chapter 18 verse 14 says this, is anything too hard for the Lord? This is a, one of the angels or God speaking uh, to uh, Abraham. He says, at the time appointed, I will return to thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Did she? Yes, she did. The omnipotent or almighty God can create out of nothing. Nobody nobody can do that. No God, no other God, I should say, can do that. Go back to Revelation chapter 19. I think I told you the story. You know, sometimes, I know it's not true, but there are some scientists who thought that they figured out how to make, uh, make a human being. Of course, I know it's a story because it says they went to God and say, God, we figured it out. We figured out how to create a human being. And he says, okay, go ahead. And so they reach down under the ground, pick up some, he says, wait a minute, get your own dirt. <laughs> now, only God can create out of nothing. And they, may, they may have been able to make a human being out of dirt, but now try to make the dirt first. Revelation 19, verse number 6. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. The Lord God Almighty. That word, omnipotent there, is the same word that we, it's that word, pantocrator. Okay, it's, it is almighty. So the Lord God Almighty, omnipotent, reigns. Jeremiah 32, 17 says this. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. And there is nothing too hard for thee. Nothing. Too, you know, if, 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 if what? The only thing, there is one thing that is too hard for God, okay? One thing, and that is nothing. Too hard for God. That means no thing is too hard. God can do anything. I think we sing a song about that, don't we? God can do anything, anything but fail. Well, there's one thing he can't do, right? Fail. In the Almighty God, not only is, does he bless us as a father does his children, and that uh, he offers us protection, in the Almighty God there's absolute, infinite goodness. God is good. Go over to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Now, Remember, God, God chose the Israelites, God chose the Jewish people, the descendants of Jacob, descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, he chose them based on his love, not based on anything that they were like. Not because they were a big people, uh, not, I mean, a great number of people, not because they uh, uh, treated him well. He just chose them. 
And, and when we look at them and we see what they have done, how they treated him, especially when you look at the book of Judges, even in the, the Exodus and seeing them complain to Moses and complain to God about all that uh, goes on as they were going into the wilderness and everything, you think, why, does he, why did he put up with them? But look at look what he he does for them, and he tells them that's going to happen. Deuteronomy chapter eight. Look at verse number ten. When thou hast eaten and are full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which He hath given thee. Now, before I finish this, go back up and see what. How he describes the land. I, I remember reading this, not for the first time, but the first time I really paid attention to it. I was reading this and I thought, man, this sounds like America. <laughs> um, verse number seven. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains, and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, olive and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. You think of this land of the United States and what God has put here. Oh, our land, our nation, can be self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. We don't need other nations to send their fruit to us. Mm -hmm. We get other nations' fruit, and the apricots are yellow instead of orange, and the figs are drier than the figs around here. Uh, this land is a good land. And we, as uh, now I'm preaching in politics, we as Americans have done what the Jewish people did with their land. Now let's go on here. Verse number 11. Beware. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee, to do thee good at thy latter end. And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of mine hand hath give, gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he sware unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Wow. So listen, I'm giving you something good. I'm giving you a land. And, and he even tells them, he didn't, did, I didn't read anything about it, but he says, I'm giving you this land. You don't even have to plant the trees. You don't even have to plant the vineyards. You don't have to build the cities. I'm giving it all to you. Oh, you might, you'll have to fight and get rid of the people. But I'm giving you a good land. A land that God says was his land. He took care of it. He says, I'm giving it to you because I chose you, because I love you. He gave it to them because he is all powerful. Remember what Jesus said. We, we, we need to keep this in mind. Jesus said, without me, ye can do nothing. We are nothing compared to God. <laughs> we have no abilities we don't have any strength or power we don't have any force apart from god you ever think about your heart we were <laughs> yeah my wife we we were in a, 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 a 
Science Museum, I think it is, in, in uh, Chicago. And they had a display there. And you can punch your date of birth in, and it would come up and tell you how many times your heart has beaten. And you look up so many millions of times, and man, that should be worn out by now. Now, God keeps it beating. God keeps us alive, and we can't do anything without God. Paul said it. When I am weak, that means when he recognizes his weakness, when he sees it and understands who he is in comparison with God, he says, when I am weak, then I know I need to depend on God because he is strong. So really, when I am weak and I recognize my weakness, I'm stronger because I depend on God because God is all powerful. If God is all powerful and we know he is there's two things i want to point out that are true number one god can do anything he decides to do anything he decides to do look over at luke chapter six luke chapter six look at verse number 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, let me, let me see if I'm re reading. Yes, I am. And behold, uh, men, where am I? Did I say six? I'm reading chapter five. Oh, I'm sorry. Verse number 17 of chapter six. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed and the whole multitude sought to touch him for there went out, there went virtue out of him and healed them all. What is virtue? Hmm? Mm -mm. We, we use it as goodness. That's good, but that but the word virtue doesn't isn't really the word goodness. It's strength. It's power. Even think about that. Even in Proverbs thirty one, where it says talks about the virtuous woman. That's a strong woman, not physically strong, spiritually strong. Okay, the strong, the virtuous woman, and it's a good strong. But here, Christ chose to heal everybody who came to him. He had the power, he had the strength to heal each one of them. That's the one thing, that's the true thing. He can do anything he decides to do. And number two, all power comes from him. If he is all powerful, then all power is his. That means your power and my power. Jesus said all power, of course, that's, that's what he's talking about, all authority. All power is given unto him in heaven and earth. But he gave us the Holy Spirit. We talked about this, I think it was on uh, Wednesday. The Holy Spirit is the power of God in us. And is it is his power that keeps us saved. We come to him by faith. But God holds us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Go to Acts chapter 1. Acts 1, verse number 8. He told the disciples to stay in Jerusalem. And he says this, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And he shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and in the uttermost parts uh, of the wor world. Look over to Acts chapter 3. Peter and John came to the, the temple uh, where it says the hour of prayer. And there was a man there who wanted, uh, want, were wait, waiting for what they call alms, waiting for a gift from them uh, because he couldn't work. He was lame. And uh, Peter, of course, said, uh, uh, I, I don't have silver and gold, so but what I have, I give you freely. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, the man was healed. But look what G what Peter says to the people. Look at verse number 
uh, 12. Well, let's look at 11. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness we had made this man walk. But don't look at me. Don't look at me as, as, as thinking that I have strength or power to do this kind of thing. No, it's God's power. Oh, he used me, but I was just a vessel that he used to heal this man. It's God's power. It's the power of God. The Almighty God is good. And in the Almighty God, there is comfort. Mm -hmm. Psalm 23, verse number 4. As yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, what? They comfort me. First John 4, 18 tells us that perfect love casteth out fear. God's love over us should comfort us. God loves us and there's nothing I should be afraid of. Perfect love casteth out fear. God's love is interconnected with his power. And so we should recognize that the almighty God loves us enough to watch over us, to take care of us, to comfort us. Paul said this. I was going to read 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5 and Romans 8, 38 and 39, but and see what time it is. And uh, uh, I read those recently in uh, uh, Wednesday, night, Wednesday night, talking about God and keeping us saved. Paul said this, though, in 2 Timothy, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. God, God is watching over us, taking care of us, Look over at 2 Corinthians chapter 13, and then we'll close. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. We know the Almighty God gave His Son to die in our place to pay our penalty of sin. He cares about us. He loves us. Look at chapter 13 and verse number 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. You know, it's, it's amazing that God can be all powerful, but still be so tender that he watches over us and holds us in his hands and takes care of us. God Almighty. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for you. We thank you for what you've done for us, what you continue to do, and what you're going to do. As we know that you are, you have been, and you shall be. So Lord, you have taken care of us all the time we've been in existence. And we know because of your word that you'll take care of us from now on. Lord, I pray that you would help us to recognize the might and the power of God, that we can always depend on him, nothing to cause fear in our lives. Thank you for showing us yourself. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.